Are you lonely, Jeremy? He seems surprised by your question. Me? I... I am... Uh... Yeah... Oh, Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir David, and today I'm going to play the updated version of Encounter. You despise your job. You always have. The moment you stepped foot into that building, you knew you'd hate it. Accurate. The rows of cubicles, the backgrounds of keyboards, tapping and photocopying, the endless amounts of caffeine needed to keep yourself awake. It's too much. What were you thinking? You could have been a scientist or a doctor, but no. Here you are, sitting at a desk all day, getting home, watching TV, going to bed, waking up to do the same thing all over again. Today was a particularly daunting day. Your co-worker and cubicle neighbor was taking a sick day to visit his aunt in the hospital. Heard she got in a nasty car accident, and he needed to see her as soon as possible. Of course you offered to do his work for the day he was absent, which was today. He had done you a couple of favors in the past, and you weren't planning on letting him down on such a stressful matter. And as happy as it made you feel to have done your good deed of the day, staying hours after your usual shift was over didn't leave you with the accomplished feeling you'd usually get after helping someone in need. Now you're finally home, and you're hungry. I feel terrible. It's starving. At this point, anything's fine to eat. I don't have the energy to make a nice meal right now. Mm. You look through your pantry, realizing that you, in fact, have no food. You contemplate ordering some food, but it would probably be cheaper heading to the store yourself. You feel a headache coming along. Just another metaphorical tomato thrown at your face, you suppose. You grab your keys and your wallet before heading out of your apartment. Luckily, the nearest store is only a five-minute walk away. Maybe the air will do you some good. You don't usually come to this store, as it is much smaller than your average supermarket. It's much closer, though, and the air's nice. Walking did you some good. You decide to go and just do your usual shopping rather than buying just a quick meal. You'll be there anyways. You walk into the store, only now realizing how late it is. There is one person working the cash register, and only about four other customers. One is already making their way to the exit. There's about twenty minutes until closing time. I should be done by then anyways. You walk into the first aisle, scanning the shelves of their different products, varying from pasta to cans of food. You aren't quite sure what you'll be getting, but this is a good aisle to start in. From the corner of your eye, you see a man wearing the uniform that the other employee at the cash register was wearing, a pink apron with a white shirt, as well as a red name tag. Oh, Jeremy! Here comes the boy! <laughs> the poor guy looks half asleep, and familiar. You can't put your finger on it, but you've seen this man before, somewhere. You continue to stare at the man, a nagging feeling in your gut telling you that you know who this is. And that's when it hits you. Espoir? Is that you? Jeremy? Jeremy quickly makes his way to you. I can't believe it! I haven't seen you since... sometime in high school. You can't believe it either. Your childhood best friend, who moved away when you were both 16, suddenly appeared in your local grocery store. How have you been, Espoir? I've been as good as I can be. What about you? Well, stocking shelves is pretty relaxing, and the store's never too busy, so I'd say I've been doing pretty good myself. This feels surreal. Your life has been so different since you last even spoke with him that you haven't even recognized him for a moment. It almost made you feel a little guilty, but who could blame you? People change over the years. His hair used to be shorter, but still as unkept as now. It was funny to see that as a constant for him, despite how many years it's been. Suddenly, Jeremy holds out his arms, inviting you to a hug, just like old times. Um... I'm gonna hug him. I'm gonna hug. You're gonna get hugged, Jeremy? 
you ecstatically jump into his arms, feeling a rush of nostalgia. You didn't realize how much you missed your best friend until just now. Your extensive enthusiasm caught him off guard, laughter escaping from him. We haven't hugged in years. I almost forgot what it was like. Jeremy lets you go. Where have you been? And when did you get back? I moved to the town next door with my mom to go live with her boyfriend at the time. I'm sorry, I completely lost your number, and I was so busy after I moved. Plus, we slowly stopped talking right before I was expelled. Jeremy starts fiddling with his apron. I guess what I'm getting at is that I was too shy to reach out to you again after I moved. I moved back about two weeks ago, and there was an apartment nearby looking for a roommate, so... So, what made you move back? Jeremy goes quiet for a moment. Just family drama, that's all. You recognize this phrase, as it was one he often used back when you were kids. There was always something going on, but he never elaborated on it more than that. He'd never let you come over, either. Whenever you asked to hang out, he'd always choose the park or your own house. Now that you think of it, you've never seen the inside of Jeremy's childhood home, nor did you ever see his mother. You knew his father wasn't around, so it always had to do with his mother. You notice Jeremy's obvious discomfort of the situation. Maybe it would be better to switch subjects. So, what high school did you transfer to after you got expelled? Oh, I actually dropped out after I moved. It was more convenient, you know? Now this took you by surprise. You always knew Jeremy as a hard-working and goal-driven individual. He was always the first person you'd pair up with for school projects, because you knew you could always count on him. Even as little kids, he was always determined to win any game and any competition you both would make. You would win most of the time, as he's never been the athletic kind, but even so, he was always determined to be number one. Plus, he never took a loss to heart, which was a quality most eight-year-olds didn't have at the time. Either way, it was almost unbelievable that he had given up on graduating. You could almost recall word for word the plans he had after school. He couldn't wait to get on with life and do some great things. But, now that you recall it, Jeremy started acting a little less determined the closer and closer he got to the point of him being expelled. You know, my mom and I were always a little tight on money. I kind of took it upon myself to help her. Her boyfriend wasn't the richest guy around either, so I just did what I had to do. Jeremy lets out a laugh. <laughs> He wasn't the most pleasant guy either, so it was better being at work than at home with him. He seems to be fine with his past and current situation, but you can't help but feel a little bit bad for him. Jeremy stops laughing when he reads your face. Hey, don't even worry about me, alright? You seem to be having very bad luck at conversational topics today. The conversation has gone quiet and it feels like you're cue to head to the next aisle. I think I'll be heading to the next aisle now. I know you've got your job to do. It was nice talking to you, though. Jeremy nodded, straightening his apron. Of course. Enjoy your shopping. Let me know if you need anything. And that was that. You moved on to the next aisle, leaving Jeremy behind. Oh, what was that face, Jeremy? You begin looking at the lines and lines of food, but your mind is somewhere else. Who could blame you? You just bumped into someone you thought you'd never see again. You find yourself thinking back to the time that you both had first met. It was a park nearby, a minute walk to your house, or thirty seconds for you since you're always too eager to get there. It was a nice park, adorned with squeaky swings and colorful slides. The wood chips would always get stuck in your shoes and the sand from the sandbox would always be overflowing from kids throwing handfuls of it overboard. The older kids would always be on the monkey bars, so you'd have to settle for the slides or the swings most of the time. That's when you met Jeremy for the first time. It was a week before first grade, and after much pleading, your parents brought you to the park. You were having so much fun that you decided that paying attention to your surroundings wasn't a priority anymore. You actually ended up crashing into Jeremy, sending you both tumbling to the floor. 
it completely knocked the wind out of you both. You, for one, thought the interaction was hilarious, so hilarious that you were too distracted laughing to notice you made the poor kid cry. Not because you hurt him, or because he was just really spooked. Only once your fit of laughter was finished did you notice the crying child next to you. Of course you apologized, but he wasn't much of a talker. Well, he never was, anyways. Not unless he got to know you good enough. At first, he ran away from the park out of what you could only imagine was embarrassment. But when school started, and you both found each other in the same class, he stuck to you like a magnet. Nobody tried to speak to him, and nobody tried to speak to you, so things just worked out perfect. Of course, things changed once high school started. You feel like you're being watched. Hello there. You look over your shoulder to see a very suspicious-looking grocery store worker. Once he notices your gaze, he, in a very not-casual manner, walks away. You continue looking at the shelves, deciding to ignore his random appearance. He could have just been doing his job, because he works here. No need to overthink it. You pick up a can, contemplating putting it in your basket. You still don't know what you want to eat despite being in the store for a handful of minutes, surrounded by food. You feel as if you're being watched again. <laughs> what are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing? <laughs> Just hanging around. You look over your shoulder a second time to find the same suspicious grocery worker staring at you again, rushing to the next aisle once he's spotted for the second time. He looks as if he had something to say, but left before you could manage to get a single word out. Now you're feeling a little on edge. You put the can you were holding back onto the shelf, picking up another one beside it. This time, Jeremy walks into the aisle, still leaving a good distance between the two of you. He stands still like a statue, not daring to move an inch nor make a single sound. He doesn't seem like he's going to speak anytime soon. Jeremy? Jeremy, do you need something, baby? Are you lonely, Jeremy? He seems surprised by your question. Me? I... I am... Uh... Yeah... Oh. Jeremy takes this as the okay to come to talking distance with you, instead of standing awkwardly on the other side of the aisle. There's just not that many people in the store, and it gets a bit boring, you know? Does it now? You said before that you found it relaxing. Well, it's relaxing, but it's lonely. People don't usually ask for help. They just do their own things, and I do mine. Which is just stocking shelves, pretty much. And I don't think my co-workers like me that much, so I'm really, really talking to people around here. Jeremy looks a bit sad as he mentions that passing comment, but it isn't anything new. People have always disliked him for reasons you can't figure out. Growing up, he was just like any other kid to you. But no matter what he did, he was always being picked on. You just chalked it up to him being quiet and awkward. He always had a hard time holding a conversation with someone, unless it was you. I remember hearing one of them call me creepy the other day. Creepy? That was something new. You don't ever remember Jeremy acting creepy, ever. He was always a very respectful individual, and he'd never mean to be bothersome to anyone. If anything, whoever said that comment was being extremely harsh. I wonder if my inner monologue will change depending on how I treat him. That's odd. I don't ever remember thinking you were creepy. Just too shy for your own good. Really? Because I've been overthinking everything I do since then. It gets very tiring. Either way, I'm glad to have someone to talk to right now. Of course he was. He never asked for much ever. He was always oddly satisfied with whatever was given to him. He never once asked for more. And completely off topic, it dawns on you that you don't have any more frozen meals in your freezer back at the apartment. Although they aren't the fanciest things out there, you got to admit they're pretty convenient, and not half bad once you know the good ones from the bad. Uh, off topic, but do you have any good frozen food recommendations? 
I'm tired of buying the same ones. Frozen meals? Sure. I can name a few pretty good ones, in my opinion, at least. Jeremy goes on to list a few off the top of his head, counting each one on his fingers. Then he laughs. It's all I eat, honestly, so I've got a lot of them memorized. It's all you eat? That sounds a little tiring, no? Jeremy shrugs at your question. It's better than anything I can cook anyways. Well, what about that time you brought those homemade cookies to school? Those are better than any restaurant cookies I've ever had. Your statement seems to amuse Jeremy, a smile coming back to his face. Baking and cooking are two different arts, Espoir. They are. Cooking is just like mad science, but baking is like flippin' alchemy. You turn back to Jeremy for a moment to ask him for directions to a certain aisle, when your eyes lock onto something you don't remember him having. Your gaze was set on a scar across his neck. It looked well healed, meaning it wasn't very recent. Then you remember a rumor circulating from high school about the fight that happened, the one that got Jeremy expelled along with the other boys who participated in it. Everyone already knew about how one of the kids had brought a knife to the fight, but word had it that the guy who owned the knife actually used it to attack Jeremy sometime after the fight started. You always told yourself it wasn't true, because you don't know what you would have done if it was. You were never able to see for yourself if the rumors were correct, because you never saw him again. But now the proof was undoubtedly in front of you. It looked like someone had dragged a knife along his throat, not deep enough to actually cause any very life-threatening danger but enough to leave a mark for years to come. Jeremy notices where your eyes land. Anyone ever tell you it's rude to stare? Your eyes immediately dark back up to his, but then he laughs. I'm pulling your leg. It's not like I'm hiding it from anyone. The, um, the scar, I mean. Can I ask, what happened to you, sweet baby boy? And where are the people who did it? So I may introduce them to my hands? Or a bat? How about you tell me what you know first, so I can fill in the blanks? You tell Jeremy what you know, the fact that the fight happened somewhere behind the school, he was cornered, and someone brought a knife. No one knows exactly why the fight began. All that the people knew was that it ended with Jeremy getting nicked in the throat. Is that all you know? No one knows why it started? No, just speculations. Jeremy chuckles again. I guess it doesn't matter why it started. It was an embarrassing reason to start a fight, and definitely didn't merit a knife to my throat. It doesn't seem like he'll be revealing anything about the fight's reason for starting. You notice his hand slip into his pocket, and he fiddles with something inside as he speaks. I can't lie to you and say I wasn't scared absolutely crapless, though. Plus, it was after school, and practically everyone was gone. No one could hear me yelling for help. I did learn I could throw a mean punch that day, though. Knocked one of the guys to the ground. There was an entire group against him, an unfair fight, especially when said group brings a knife to it. Well, serves him right. They had it coming. Absolutely. With that, you turn back to a shelf once more, continuing to shop as you feel the conversation is nearing its end. You scan the aisle for a moment, and Jeremy does the same. So, would it be rude if I asked what you do for work? Just an office job, exactly what you're picturing in your head. Do you like your job, then? Is it a bit enjoyable, at the very least? It pays the bills. That's the important bit, huh? Suddenly, your elbow knocks over a box, and it falls to the floor. Let me get that for you. He bends down to grab the box, then something else clatters to the floor, out of Jeremy's pocket. Oh, is that the knife what cut you, Jeremy? Do you keep it as a keepsake? A switchblade lies in front of you, something that you are 110% sure he is not allowed to have on him. Jeremy immediately picks it up and shoves it back into his pocket. The fact that he immediately went to hide it makes him seem even more guilty. That was, um, I'm allowed to have it, I swear. I'm not. I'm not allowed to have it, so let's keep this between you and I, alright? 
Why not? Why not? I carry around a knife. I've got an adorable little Barbie uh, butterfly knife. And by that, I mean it's got little butterflies on it. Why, why can't he carry a knife? He might need to open boxes. What, what, what you need it for, fam? I guess I'm a bit paranoid. This job was hard enough to get. If anyone finds out I'm carrying this, I'll be fired. I've gotten enough warnings, and this'll be the tipping point. And it makes me feel better, having it on me, just in case. You feel unsafe? Do I have to work here and be your personal bouncer? I guess I do feel a bit uneasy sometimes. And it's not like it's a gun, just let this go. Please tell me you'll let this go. You consider it for a moment. I won't say anything in this playthrough. Jeremy lets out a breath of relief, taking his hand out of his pocket and clasping it with his other. God, thank you, Espoir. I mean it. I really, really, really do. I'm sorry if I freaked you out a bit there. Suddenly, a woman speeds down the aisle straight towards Jeremy. Ah, ma'am. You, help me find something before the darn store closes. Sure thing, ma'am. Before either of you can speak, the woman storms off, and Jeremy follows reluctantly. Hey, you get back here with my creepy friend. As you watch them leave, you realize the store really is about to close. You pay for your things at the cash register and leave, Jeremy completely out of your mind. Hmm. You hear someone running close behind you. Hello? But when you turn around... Whoever was there is gone. You turn back around and keep walking back to your apartment. You get to your door. You unpack everything you bought, putting things in their respective spots. Your arms are sore, walking with all the bags you bought. Quickly, you make yourself a meal and eat it hungrily. You put away your dishes before you get ready for bed. Finally, you tiredly collapse onto your bed, phone in hand. You stare up at the ceiling, allowing yourself to finally unwind after a stressful day. Suddenly, your phone chimes up. Upon further inspection, the notification is actually a new follower, something that struck you as odd. Your account consisted of pictures of you with your family and friends, and the new follower had a name you didn't recognize as someone you knew. You click on their profile, but the name Simon is the only thing displayed on it. The account was made today. They don't seem to be following anyone besides you, nor were they followed by anyone. The profile picture was still the default image, and you really couldn't tell who it was. You decide not to worry about it, and put your phone down. But suddenly, your phone chimes up again. What's, what's happening? What's going on? You pick up your phone again to see more notifications from the Simon account you saw before. You see the account eagerly interacting with yours, liking all of your recent posts as well as adding positive comments underneath them. All in the span of just a few minutes? Suddenly, you get a direct message from Simon. Simon, seeming eager to speak with you, expressed his excitement about a band you had a shirt of in one of the photos he saw on your page. You two talk for a few minutes. It's nice. But finally, you put your phone down and get some rest. The next few weeks go by as usual. Same office job, same schedule, same subway ride home. The only difference now is that you seem to have made a friend with this Simon. You two would talk frequently and you begin to find yourself awaiting his replies eagerly at times. Embarrassing, maybe, but it did make your day less dull. Then, one day, you get home and notice your windows wide open. Oh, no. At first, you thought nothing of it, until you remembered your apartment was on the first floor, meaning anyone could have gotten in if they wanted to. You look around briefly, but everything looks as it should be, Nothing of value was missing, either. But then you notice a paper sitting on your kitchen counter that you are sure you didn't leave there. Read its contents? No. Can I do anything but that? Uh -huh. 
You hadn't told Simon about any of your personal information. Hello. Thought I'd stop in and say hi, but you weren't here. Simon! That's not cool, brah! That's not cool! You immediately informed the authorities, and an investigation began, but there were no current leads. You were left in suspense for the foreseeable future as to how this could have happened. After the investigation began, things settled down. Simon's account was practically wiped out of existence to your and the authorities' dismay. For a while, it was okay. But then, things in your apartment began to go missing. Things would be misplaced. Sometimes your chores seem to do themselves, or maybe you're just forgetting that you did them. Sometimes you hear footsteps at night. Maybe you're hearing things. Those reassurances don't change the fact that you're paranoid. Then there's a new note, and another, and another, and another. Eep! Ending 4. You frantically look around for any signs of Simon in your apartment, but he's nowhere to be found. The notes continue. Every week, a new note is left mysteriously in your home, each more threatening than the other. Simon! Simon, what you want? What do you even want? You make sure to lock all of your windows, but somehow Simon continues to enter. You request a lock change, which is granted. A month passes by without any other issues, and you slowly begin to live your life as you once did, unafraid to leave your home. Then, somehow, against all odds, a new note appears on your fridge. I can't believe you've done this. How dare you. Uh, maybe I'm not that excited to see you, friend. How about we just fist, fist bump and said, like, what up, what up, brah? This causes Jeremy to laugh as he enthusiastically fist bumps you back. A wave of nostalgia washes over you as you recall doing this countless times as kids. I'm sad I can't remember the secret handshake we made. Do you remember it at all? You think about it for a moment before admitting defeat. No, I completely forgot it. That must have been years ago. No wonder. All right, but you gotta remember how we always used to skip gym and hide out in the old janitor closet, right? Your eyes widen at the memory. How could you have forgotten? You laugh, recalling the many times you were scolded together by the teachers when you'd get caught hiding in there. Remember the time Mr. Bernock walked by and saw us in there for the fifth time and just gave up? Well, getting detention for hiding in a closet was way better than showing up for P.E., wasn't it? Now that you think of it, Jeremy always tried to convince you to skip that specific class with him. You knew it was because he wasn't very athletic to begin with, but you sort of noticed that the kids in the class were extra rough on him. Specifically, these four boys who are always together. You knew them too well. They were part of the fight that got Jeremy expelled, after all. Those guys in our class never let you catch a break, huh? You notice him fiddling with something in his pocket. You mean the knife? In your pocket? Never. Sometimes I feel like their life's duty was to absolutely ruin my day. The atmosphere turns a little uncomfortable, neither of you knowing what to say. Jeremy suddenly ends the silence by chuckling, his grin coming back to his face like usual and pulling his hand out of his pocket seeming to have let go of whatever he was holding. Well, what are we gonna do about it? It's long past me anyways. Plus, I never had the misfortune of meeting those bastards again after I moved. Sounds like a perfect time to change subjects. Talking about moving, when did you get back? I definitely wasn't expecting to bump into you today. Or, well, ever, actually. Jeremy looks a little awkward fiddling with his apron as he speaks. Well, family drama. The usual. This was a phrase he often used whenever asked about his family. You knew his father wasn't around, so whenever he said this, he was always referring to his mother. Your mom giving you a hard time again? You say this lightly, because you actually never knew exactly what his mother was like, or whatever the family drama entailed. You never had the chance to meet her, thanks to Jeremy never inviting you over to his house under any circumstances. 
Jeremy seems to find your comment amusing, successfully bringing a smile back to his face. Uh, something like that. The conversation has gone quiet, and it feels like you're cute to head to the next aisle. Uh, what if I say, yeah, he's just doing his job. <laughs> you feel like an attention seeker thinking that he could actually be trying to watch you. Why would he be doing that? He works here. Mm. A minute passes in complete silence. You're at a loss as to what to do. He hasn't moved an inch since he stepped into the aisle, and neither of you. You reluctantly look back at him, hoping that he does. Well, anything. Any sign of life coming out of him would be greatly appreciated. Jeremy notices you looking at him oddly, and immediately scrambles to the shelf in front of him, randomly picking up cans and placing them in different places. You feel the need to say something, but you don't know what. You continue to watch as Jeremy tried to look busy. Jeremy suddenly stops, putting a can he had in his hand back into the shelf, turning to you and acting surprised. Oh, hey! I didn't see you there. I was so busy reorganizing the shelf that I completely tuned you out. Well, what are you doing here? Just, uh, shopping. Mm-hmm. You decide to leave him be, turning away from him, starting to walk to the next aisle. But Jeremy suddenly interrupts you mid-stride, clearing his throat. You turn to look at him as he holds up a can of corn up in the air, inspecting it and talking to himself. Aw, oh, man, I just love this type of corn. I can vouch for it. It's my go-to corn company. Corn. You could make something with a can of corn, right? It's good, apparently, says the grocery worker in front of you. <laughs> you walk back towards him, picking up the same type of can. If you say it's good, I might as well try some, right? Uh, yeah. Let me know if you like it. You turn back to Jeremy for a moment to ask him for directions to a certain aisle, when your eyes lock onto something you don't remember him having. Your gaze was set on a scar going across his neck. It looked well healed, meaning it wasn't very recent. Eh, uh, what if I say this time I'd hide it? You really don't need to hide your scars. But, eh. Jeremy looks taken aback for a moment, before chuckling quietly. It isn't something I'm particularly ashamed of, so I don't see a need to, you know? You do know why I got it, right? I'm surprised you of all people would tell me something like that. You recall the rumors of what happened that day in high school when the fight happened. If anything, it sounded like he was attacked, and he tried his best to fight back, which led to the scar. You were attacked? What does that have to do with me? Oh, um, never mind then. Mmm? You dropping lore, Jeremy? I guess I assumed you knew. Word traveled fast in that school. A long silence follows his words. You genuinely cannot remember a single thing about the fight besides the basics. He was attacked, someone brought a knife, and he got the blade in his neck. Well, this is embarrassing. I guess I could tell you, if you're curious. But before you could answer, he interrupts you with a nervous chuckle. Or not. It isn't that big of a deal. High school drama's long gone, and I guess I could cover it up. The scar, I mean. Another daunting silence commences, and you take it as your cue to turn your attention back to shopping. You scan the aisle for a moment, and Jeremy does the same. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy, what's that knife for? Why do you need it? <laughs> he is most certainly not being childish and immature, but uh, what if I say you're being childish and immature? You shouldn't carry a switchblade of all things around with you for no good reason. Even if you might disagree with me, please just don't tell anyone about this. You consider it for a moment. Fine, I won't say anything. Thank you, Espoir. Suddenly, a woman speeds down the aisle, straight towards Jeremy. Jeremy, it's a Karen! Run! Finally, you tiredly collapse onto your bed, phone in hand. You stare up at the ceiling, allowing yourself to finally unwind after a stressful day. Suddenly, your phone chimes up. You read the spam message notification, 
before blocking the contact. Oh, you put your phone down. <laughs> Ending two. Spam message. Better get some rest for work tomorrow. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, what if I just offer a handshake? He holds out his arms a few seconds longer before you raise your own for a handshake. He stares at your hand, looking confused, before shaking it. Long time no see, huh? It has been a long time, so long that you're not quite sure what to say anymore, let alone hug him. A handshake felt much more appropriate. Jeremy clears his throat before smiling again, hoping to clear the awkward atmosphere. Well, no need to act like a stranger. We're friends, aren't we? Friends, maybe. It has been so long since you've last seen Jeremy that it feels almost hard to tell. Of course, you still have some fondness for him since you two were best friends. But that was a long time ago. It feels weird trying to force that closeness you both used to have onto each other now. You find yourself smiling out of politeness to his comment, not having much to say. Mm. There's a long silence. So, what brings you here so late? Shopping. Sure, but so late at night? You must have nothing at home. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that's the situation. Another long silence. This time, Jeremy doesn't seem to be able to muster up the same customer service voice he had the last awkward silence. So, I moved back here two weeks ago. There was an apartment looking for a roommate nearby, and so I took the opportunity. You nod. This conversation isn't really going anywhere, and you need to shop anyways. The conversation has gone quiet, and it feels like you're cue to head to the next aisle. Can... can I help you, fam? Huh? No! Can I help you? Jeremy chuckles awkwardly, creeping you out a bit. Was he always this off-putting? Maybe that was a little harsh. Nope, I'm doing fine on my own. Thanks for asking. Alright, let me know if you need something, anything at all. I'll be nearby. He meant that literally, as in, he didn't leave the aisle. At least he was leaving a reasonable distance between the two of you instead of breathing down your neck. Uh, I need to tell someone about that knife that just, uh, flopped out of your pocket there, friend. No, you can't. I need this job. And I need this knife. I would never use it on anyone, I swear. You know me. I wouldn't even dream of it. Then why do you need it? Why did you hide it so quickly? I would never use it on anyone. Just do me a favor and let this go. You're being childish. You're not allowed to carry something like that. I can't let this go. I would never use it on anyone. Just leave it alone. Jeremy looks off to the corner of his eye for a moment, looking for anyone who might be entering the aisle. Try and... Try and take it from his pocket. As you... As you take a step closer and reach out towards him, his eyes snap back towards you. Suddenly, he throws his fist, seemingly out of instinct, uppercutting your chin. Aha! <laughs> he just decks me? <laughs> Alright, I, I deserve that. I deserve that, Jeremy. You feel dizzy. Soon, your mind fades to nothingness. I deserve that. And suddenly, you open your eyes, unable to see anything in pitch black darkness. Okay, maybe you're, you're maybe you're taking this a little bit too far, Jeremy. I mean, I stepped out of line, but uh, confused and alerted, you try to make sense of your surroundings. You're lying down somewhere. The walls are tight around you, and the ceiling is practically touching your nose. Oh? Oh no? You desperately pound your fists at the ceiling. Nothing. You hear a car engine start. Oh dear! Oh noes! He didn't mean it, he swears. He would never hurt anyone. You know him. Oh no! Oh yeah, I didn't ask him. Are you alright? Are you alright, fam? Me? Sure, I'm alright. Thanks for asking. I, uh, 
didn't tell you this to vent or anything. I just wanted to let you know the full story, you know? But really, thank you for asking. It means a lot. With that, you turn back to a shelf once more, continuing to shop as you feel the conversation is nearing its end. I also didn't say, whatever, I don't care. So, does that mean you don't care enough to tell anyone? That's exactly what I mean. Alright, thank you. Suddenly, a woman steals your adorable scrunkly away from you, ma'am! Miss! We were having a conversation. You see that the new follower is an account created today with the name of Simon. The account doesn't have any followers and follows only one person. You. You find that a bit weird, considering you only uploaded occasional pictures of you with your friends and family, but you shrug it off and turn off your phone. Days go by, and you've completely forgot about it. Ah! Ending 3. Ghost Follower. It could very well be that Simon is actually Jeremy, but I don't know, I have the strong feeling that we might be dealing with two lads here. I don't know, I could be wrong, maybe it is Jeremy, but I have the feeling that Simon might be someone completely different. As always, there will be a link in the description so you can play this game yourself and follow the, 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 follow the developer for any more developments. But anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself. Have a great night. And remember, there is always hope. <laughs>